Commission to welcome our guest of honor, Mr. Haji Hanifa Jan, Chief Executive Councillor and Chairman Ladakh Autonomy. Culture and Language Kargil to present your thoughts to esteem Mr. Peace Power Ambassador, Government of India. Language Kargil to present thoughts to Mr. John. Now, Ala Saida Baz. Now, Executive Councillor for Zanskar Affairs. Convener and Director of Munshi Aziz Bhatt Museum for Slick Root and Central Asian Trade Tarly to present the welcome address and welcome all the delegates and distinguished guests. Mr. Gulta, Mr. Munshi. Thank you. Starting with the name of God, the most beneficent and merciful. It gives us immense pleasure to welcome you all on the 17th International Conference of ILS in Kargil. We have been looking forward for this from the last, I think, more than 11 years. This conference hall held in Kargil for the first time in 2004. And after that, we were lucky enough to host the conference once again in 2015. On behalf of all organizing committee of ILS, all members, and on behalf of our president, Mr. John Bray, secretary, Mr. Sonam Mangchuk, and all the members, I welcome you all to the 17th ILS conference in Kargil. We particularly Welcome our today's chief guest, Alhaj Nab, Haji Inayat Ali, Chairman, Legislative Council, Jammu and Kashmir, and our guest of honor, Alhaj Nab, Mohammad Hanifa Jan, Chairman, LHGC Kargil, and our today's special guest, Mr. P. Stoptan, the former ambassador, Government of India, and all national and international participant who has come all the way to participate in the conference and distinguished guests and honorable citizens, honorable executive councillors, councillors to this conference on from the core of our heart. Kargil jaise ilake mein is conference ko dusri dafa inqaad karte huye hume badi khushi maasus hoti hai. मैं बहुत से ऐसे चेहरों को देख रहा हूं जो इससे पहले कॉन्फ्रेंस में तशरीफ लाए थे लेकिन बहुत से ऐसे लोग लॉट ऑफ मनी पीपल आई कैन सी हु आर कमिंग फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन कारगिल हम उन सब को अपने दिल की अमीर गहराइयों से खुश आमदेद कहते हैं कारगिल जो अपनी सकाफत अपने तमद्दुन अपने भाईचारे के लिए अपनी मिसाल आप है वी आर प्राउड टू से दैट कारगिल इज वन ऑफ द पीसफुल एरियाज ऑफ हिमालयास वायर की यू कैन से दैट different communities, the Buddhist, Muslims, residing their life with peace and harmony. We are proud to say that Kargil is one of the most peaceful areas in the Himalayan region where the crime rate is almost zero. I hope that you all will enjoy this conference who is going to start from today up to 29. We are really thankful for LHGC Kargil for collaborating us in this conference and Department of Art, Culture and Language. Jinke Madad Ke Bagar, without their cooperation, I think it was really impossible for us to make this event a successful. I particularly thank Mr. Nazir and his party, Jinone Din Raat Amara Saad Mehnat Kiya. So, I am going to say that. और तमाम मेंबर की तरफ से एक दफा फिर आप सब का इस कॉन्फ्रेंस में तशरीफ लाने पर दिल की अमीर गहराइयों से शुक्रिया अदा करता हूं और उम्मीद करता हूं कि आप ये जो कॉन्फ्रेंस है जिससे हमें उम्मीद है कि हमारे खासकर जो स्टूडेंट्स हैं जो रिसर्च स्कॉलर्स हैं उनको यहां बहुत फायदा मिलेगा उनको एक इंट्रैक्शन करने का एक बेहतरीन मौका जो हमने कोशिश किया है इस कॉन्फ्रेंस के जरिए वो इससे फैजयाब होंगे तो मुझे उम्मीद है कि आप सब लोग इस कॉन्फ्रेंस को एंजॉय करेंगे सो वंस अगेन इन द एंड from the all organizing committee and members of ILS, 
I welcome you all in this conference and hope that you will have a pleasant stay during these days. Thank you very much. International session for the last studies, please, and the present conference. For coming. Um, my task is to introduce a little bit about the ILS, and I will tell you something about its history and what we do and what I think our value is. The history of the organization, we're now 34 years old. The first conference was in 1981 in Germany, in southern Germany, in Constance. That was at a time when a number of international researchers have been beginning to study Ladakh, and they wanted to share and discuss what they had been doing. The second conference was in Po in France, and the third in Helmut in Germany in 1987. And that was the time when we decided to form the IALS for the first time. Now, as you can see, we've got to the number 17, an amazing number. The 12th conference was here in Kargil a decade ago. Now, I'm delighted to be back here in Kargil. And again, I have to join with Gulzer in thanking so many people who have made it possible. I'm thanking the Hill Council, the JNK Academy, and there are a number of individuals to thank. Uh, I'm going to embarrass them a little bit by thanking Gulza himself, uh, all the volunteers who've been supporting him, Nazir in the Academy, and my colleagues in the, in the Executive Committee, uh, especially Sona Wangchuk and Sunetro, who have been running a kind of shuttle service between Ley and Cargill for the last several months. So these are only the top people, uh, they're not the only people, it's a collaboration. Thank you to all my heart for those people and to you for coming and making this part of our continuing history. Now let, let me say something about what the ILS is for. It's for the study of Ladakh. And the first thing is, well, what is Ladakh? In the streets of Delhi, you might ask, what is Ladakh? And you will probably be told, it is the Pangong Lake. Um, we are for the study of the whole of Ladakh, not just the Pangong Lake, not just Leh, not just Kargil. Also, Kartse, Zanskar, Dras, um, Dahanu. So we are for the study of the whole of Ladakh and for all the many communities in Ladakh many languages, uh, including, uh, I was just hearing this morning, the uh, Ladakh Academy is working in Balti, but also on Shina. Uh, so we are interested in all those issues. The second thing is we, are, we exist for research. And research means discovering something new or expressing something new maybe a small thing, but we are trying to discover new things to expand knowledge of Ladakh. In research, we are keen to encourage new researchers and old researchers. New researchers may be young researchers, or they may be middle-aged researchers, or they may be old researchers. We are here to encourage them. We're also here to encourage high standards and to help people meet those standards. So research is not just to find in a book something is written and to say here is this, this is what I found in a book. It is to say this is what I've discovered from looking at inscriptions, from finding old texts, from interviewing old people, from measuring glaciers, from photographing birds and wildlife. It's this first-hand research which is what we think is important. And the second thing, uh, the third thing rather, is about sharing the research. So the sharing is between friends. Um, last night over dinner, this morning over breakfast. It's sharing at conferences like this. It's sharing through our publications. It's sharing through our internet. Um, and frankly, I think we need to be better at sharing uh, finding new ways of communicating what we have discovered to different audiences, to younger people, to older people. I mentioned different languages. Well, we operate in English. 
कभी कभी हम उर्दू भी बोलते हैं बट इंग्लिश इज आर मेन लैंग्वेज वी नीड टू बी कम्युनिकेटिंग इन डिफरेंट लैंग्वेज इन डिफरेंट वेज सो वाई डज दिस ऑल मैटर वट इज दैल्यू ऑफ इट वेल Perhaps I can share some of my sojula. That was a good beginning to Ladakh. I've got a very strong impression, and I had many questions about Ladakh. Discoveries which were new for myself, and then I started asking new questions and new questions and new questions. So I had questions I asked, and I had a chance to share them uh, at IRS conferences. The first one I went to was the second one in Nepal. It since the 17th century. What's the value of that? You can't make any money now at a trade in Rudok. Uh, until 1948, maybe you could make some money, but not now. So it's R of value. I think they're a great value. Everything that we are doing, we're discovering our world. We're discovering how our world, why our world is like it is now. These are happy discoveries. We often find the world is more, and our job. as our task as researchers is to share what we have discovered what other people do with those discoveries that's another matter but our task for being here i thank our many colleagues who have come and worked so hard to make this happen and of course i wish the conference to be a, a great success thank you kargil has a rich history and culture and had nurtured several tribes and languages the six main tribes of the region are the purik the balti the dardi the bhotu the zanskari and the shina the people mostly depend on agriculture as mr john gray said that kargil for centuries was a trade center on the famous silk road trade as well as the meeting place therefore the place is known as also as garkil garment wear and skill means in the center the people of baltistan called them their own land balti and balti yul yul being village baltistan is spread over 26000 square kilometers it has 60 mountain peaks of 21000 feet or more than of them rise above 8000 meters right up to in century it was known as bulo the inhabitants of baltistan is a mixture of aryan and tibetan stock they are mongolia but mongolia baltistan is full of natural and adventurous beauty the second highest peak of the world k2 is there the gilgit agency the climb the chinese people call baltistan the bulo the uh, chinese province xinjiang to the north east and to the and the gilgit agency in the northwest kargil district in the southeast it has five valleys shigar skardu kapulu rondo and karman the people of baltistan are quite hospitable they are very friendly and they are very fond of dance and music ryanglu is the their main form of folk song local balti ghazal uh, very common this is known as luka it comprises of music rhythm and dance got for a big name the first european to visit baltistan in 1830 1830 in his book travel in kashmir balti ladakh in skardu mentions the unique thing about balti people is always their smiling faces and clapping hands now i would request the balti troop from hardas mindok sir to present a beautiful balti folk song and a folk dance ni strovi toti the title of the song is ni strovi
फ्री एंड कॉन्फिशनल केक्स वेडिंग केक्स पेस्ट्रीज बर्थडे केक्स ब्रेड बर्न मटन पेटीज टी एंड कॉफी आर बेकरी आइटम्स अवेलेबल एट सना बेकरी ग्राउंड फ्लोर पी सी पैलेस मैन बाजार कार्ड कारगिल बर्थडे केक्स ब्रेड बर्न्स मटन पेटीज टी एंड कॉफी आर बेकरी आइटम्स अवेलेबल एट सना बेकरी ग्राउंड फ्लोर पी सी पैलेस मैन बाजार पार्क specialist on central asia as a commentator but also as a diplomat so for much of his career he's been based in delhi at the institute of defense and strategic analysis but he's also served in indian embassies in kazakhstan and as ambassador in, in kyrgyzstan and while he was um, based there he's also traveled to the northern neighbor to uh, sinjang what used to be called chinese turkestan All this is on the public record. You can see um, his many articles on the internet and in the press. He's a very astute commentator. But there are, there are some aspects of his career which you may not know. Uh, I first met Stockton 30 years ago at the second ILS conference in Pau. That's an example of what I've just been talking about, about how the ILS is a meeting place. So that's how I first met Stockton. We've been friends since then. Stockton was also at the third conference, which was in Hernut. I said Hernut was in Germany. It was then in what was East Germany. At, at that time, Stockton was studying in Ulaanbaatar in, in Mongolia. How do you get from Ulaanbaatar to Dresden in East Germany? It's quite a puzzle. Actually, though, in the socialist period, it was quite obvious. You went by train. You go by train from Ulaanbaatar to Moscow, and from Moscow to Warsaw, and I suppose from Warsaw to Berlin, and from Berlin to Dresden, and, and then you go to a place called Bautzen, I think, uh, and then you go on a small branch line to Hernut. It took him a week to get there. 
Uh, and in fact, he couldn't stay for the whole conference because it was going to take him another week to go back. So it took him two weeks to attend our conference for maybe two days actually on site. I, I, I have a photograph of him, of him at that time. I'm afraid I'm not a good photographer and it's not a good photograph, but he's wearing a Mongolian hat and it's about three feet wide and, and it's a very furry Mongolian hat. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome Stockton back again to an ILS conference to share some of his experience to us today. Punto Stockton, thank you very much, and I now invite you to the stage. Thank you for this beautiful performance. I think it was excellent. I really enjoyed it. Uh, well, I think, uh, uh, Honorable the Chairman of the J. Legislative Council, Jinabe Naira Lisa, Chairman of the Health Council, Jinabe Mohammed Ali Fajan, John Ray, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'm extremely happy to be back in uh, ILS after 27 years. I just mentioned my early association with the uh, with the organization. But, uh, you know, uh, since then I shifted my focus away from Ladakh last so many years now. Uh, but nonetheless, I've been following events in Ladakh. In fact, I used to contribute to a certain public movement, uh, the, uh, the intellectual support base those days for the moment uh, that uh, happened in the 1990s, early 90s. And uh, in fact, I lost my job for articulating Ladakh case, the Ladakh political case, and the result was this autonomous hill council. And I remember how the union home secretary, Padman Abaya, those days, used to uh, ask me and explain why Ladakh is so important for this nation. Anyway, uh, that's a long story. But uh, I'm happy to be back here, especially in Kargil. And I do uh, occasionally read the research papers, the publications of the IAMS. They are excellent. Uh, because of the shortage of time, I like to be brief. And I've only got five points to make. Number one, I wish to speak something on the, on the scope of Ladakh studies. John Gray was very diplomatic, very, very nicely explained and didn't go beyond the required, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the logic of, of studying, the, uh, of understanding Ladakh. And I, I do see a lot of work being done on the historical Ladakh, on the cultural Ladakh, on the geographical Ladakh, on the ethnographic Ladakh. But I have a problem. I have a problem, serious problem. I see that this kind of a study is, is either a study of romanticism of Ladakh, which I think it was required for some time, but not all the time. You can romanticize Ladakh uh, for a brief period, but uh, reality is something else. And I see the, the second trend is basically about bean counting. You can keep on counting beans, but you don't reach anywhere. This is where I, I would say that we require a perspective, a framework. What should be Ladakh? Nobody defines Ladakh properly. And, and I think it's high time people should define the, uh, the, the Ladakh in real terms, and not just in the started uh, move. Therefore, I, I seriously believe that a contextualization of Ladakh is extremely important. Otherwise, it can't be just a pastime ad hoc studies here and there, making no sense. Ultimately, all this research and studies must lead to something not just an academic exercise, exercise, but surely a practical understanding of the situation, what it is, 
like what Ladakh today, the 21st century. And therefore, I do see that heart issues are still ignored. People go into easy areas. And uh, I would still suggest that it's time to look at the big picture. The big picture of Ladakh. And what is the big picture of Ladakh? The big picture of Ladakh is that world without politics is just a globe. It's just a earth. I think Ladakh, without understanding the complexities of politics of Ladakh, is just a mountain terrain of the trans himalayan region. And I think we are not here as a geologist to study geography. We study Ladakh, something called Ladakh, you know, idea of Ladakh. I think here I would uh, go one step ahead. I'm not a historian, but I do know I'm aware about I'm a historically conscious person. I do understand the contribution made by early, you know, the, the missionary uh, priest or teacher. I don't know much about Buddhism, how Buddhism was introduced in Ladakh, how Sufism, how, uh, you know, uh, Shamshuddin Iraqi. I've studied about it a very long time ago. How they have contributed, Sayyid Hamdin. They have contributed to the spiritual life of this region. But I think this region is not about looking at this region from the prism of religion. <laughs> then you will get a very distorted picture about Ladakh. Ladakh is something else, something more than what we practice, what we believe in our own way in terms of our spirituality. Therefore, I, 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 I have a problem whether Ladakh study is a core study. It's a core subject or is it a periphery? It's a peripheral issue of Tibet studies or Persian studies or some other studies. I think it's time to evolve Ladakh studies as a Ladakh studies, not just a case study or some other study. I do ex or maybe Turkey or something else or Kashmir. Maybe Punjab also, I don't know. But uh, I also believe that this is a center of peripheries. Almost every periphery meets in Kargil or in Kut or Silk Root or whatever that you wish to call it. But certainly there is a, a core base in the periphery also. And that's why I do not discount the importance of 15th century, 16th century Ladakh, which was the defining of Ladakh. A distant, uh, distorted identity of that. Some remarkable work, this is my second point, that Western anthropologists, Western explorers, have done some remarkable work on Ladakh from the objectivity point of view, not just the mystic point of view, but also objective point of view. Explorers or the scholars and military officers had their own agenda. Big political sort of uh, idea about what Ladakh is. And surely the, the works that Ladakh has changed, Ladakh has gone beyond uh, 18th, 19th century uh, period. But I think in the post-independence day uh, times, we neither see the scholarship nor the leadership to reshape Ladakh or re-energize the concept of Ladakh. And this is where the distortion has taken place. I have read the book of Joseph Corbell. You know him? Joseph Corbell was the father of Madden Lyon Albright, former Secretary of the State of the United States. He was the UN chief in Kashmir in 1948. He wrote that Mr. Sheikh Abdullah, then Chief Minister, articulated Ladakh in terms of international politics. He used the threat perception of China and Russia to secure Ladakh. But he stopped his understanding of Ladakh right there and didn't move further. I do understand that there is a, a thinking, a, a frame of thinking in Mr. Uh, the current Chief Minister, who decided to contextualize Ladakh in an international and regional context. I think this is extremely important. If you want to understand Ladakh, 
it can be understood only in relative terms. What is Ladakh is that it is not Sinkia. What is Ladakh is this is not Tibet. What is Ladakh is this is not Kashmir. Only in this term you can understand Ladakh. Otherwise, Ladakh is a very loose concept uh, which is hard to uh, figure out. I, that's the tragic part of it. You know, in the absence of good understanding of Ladakh, Ladakh has never become a factor of South Asian politics. It was not a factor for the partition. It was just happened. Government of India had a Tibet policy, but they didn't have a Ladakh policy. As a result, the Ladakh is fragmented. The eastern part of Ladakh is called Western, no, Eastern Ladakh is called now Western Tibet. The central Ladakh is called District Leh and District Kargil. The Western Ladakh is something else now. So it's a, it's a tragedy and I, I really think that somebody should go into the deeper aspect of this concept of Ladakh. I'm also happy, you know, it was very sad to see a certain amount of violence in Leh last week in the context of some taxi issue. It's a very sad thing, but also happy. I'm also happy that the myth about Ladakh is now slowly exploding. There is no myth about Ladakh, that Ladakh people are good, innocent, Sharif, and all that thing. This is a reality. You must understand, you can't mystify Ladakh anymore. People are trying to learn to live with the reality, with the rest of the world. So I, I don't justify violence, but this is a process. Process of your adjustment. I'm violence. giving his green note address of today's conference. After this, we are going to present a beautiful traditional dance from Garkun, the Dard people. Ethnologically, Dards are the Indo-Aryan stock. They are believed to be the survivors from the Alexander the Great, great troops who after their journal departure, journal's departure scattered over India's valley, lying between Calendarine and the Dardadis. There is no definite time when Dards migrated towards Indus Valley. However, they migrated to Ladakh in many batches, later settled down along Dras, Da, Hanu, Garkon, Darsiks, and Skirbuch and Extra. At the beginning, the Dards migrated to Ladakh from Gilgit and scattered along the banks of Indus River in Lower Ladakh. Some believe that thousands years ago, four Brook brothers arrived in the Indus Valley via Gilgit. On their way, one brother returned to Gilgit, the other three settled down in Da, Hanu, and Garkur. The Dars considered Kesar, regaling as their foremost hero. Beside Dars, there are many heroes with Daran, Melo, Extra. They sung about their ancestors during the harvest festival celebrated every, in every three years, interval called the Chima Sarla Fallo Fala. Bonana is the festival of fertility. It begins with the arrival of the Labaps, who led the group of worshippers. Later, they are welcomed at a festival ground by the Drupas with their beautiful costumes, dance, singing, and folk songs. Now, I request the cultural troop from Garkun to present a very beautiful marriage song of the Dads. <laughs>
and song by the artists of Purik from Bodkarbo. Purik or present Kargil district. The major regions of Purik are Suru Karse, Pashkyum, Mulbek, Sot, and Shakarchitta. There are four theories about the name Purik itself. One is that it's a contradiction of Tibetan phrase Potrix, which means the Tibetan stone. In their case, the name probably dates to the era when a Tibetan dynasty was first established, a government in most of they are close to the Tibetan, then are, are people of Lim. Another interpretation is that Purik means tube and refers to the Tibetan valleys that make up the inhabited parts of the region. Scholars like Franke feel that the word has been derived from Burik, which means brave race. The fourth theory is that Tibetans were the first to rule here. They came from Pura, therefore they named the region Puri. Now we are going to present a beautiful song of Mindok Tango. Mindok Tango, Chi Senmo, Dia Mindok Tango, Mindok Tango, Ganabi, Dia Mindok Tango, Mindok Tango, Sharnabi, Dia Mindok
Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development Council, Kargil, to come to the dais and share his valuable views about the conference. Mr. Muhammad Jamal Rahim. Honorable Chairman, Legislative Council, Jammu and Kashmir. Honorable Executive Councillors, Agha Said Abbas and Mr. Andus. Honorable Councillor Tom Ajay Abbas, Professor P. Sobdan, former ambassador. President ILS, Mr. John Gray, distinguished delegate from different part, part of the world, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum and welcome to Kargil. It gives me Great pleasure to welcome all of you to Kargil Ladakh and to the 17th Conference of International Association for Ladakh Studies. We all very proud of Ladakh's rich history and trade and innovation. From what I see here today, I am convinced that Ladakh has remained true to this tradition and is now meeting place for intellectual and cultural exchange. The distance that each of you has traveled to be here today underlines the importance of this exchange. I am thankful to ILS for organizing such conference which provides all of us an opportunity to learn from each other. We are all happy to partner with ILS and JNK Academy of Art, Culture and Languages to host this conference in Kargil and Look forward to hear many interesting discussions for the next few days. I see many different faces here today, many of who are known and familiar while other though new will become known through this conference. I am especially heartened to see so many Ladakhi youths and scholars here today. I believe that their expertise, skill and wisdom, especially of the youth, will shape the future of our society. The ILS hold its conference once in two years and organized workshop on research for students in Leh and Cargill. Such meetings are very important. I think we should hold them 
more frequently. As a representative of the Lada Autonomous Health Development Council, Cargill, I assure you all possible support for such fruitful conference. I believe that such discussion play an important role in helping us to develop a responsible society, responsive government and increase awareness, of, uh, awareness about different issues. On that note, I once again welcome all of you to Cargill. I hope you have many fruitful discussion over the next few days and I wish you all have a very pleasure stay in Cargill. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum. Thank you, respected Haji Hanifa. Saab Honorable Chief Executive Councilor and Chairman Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development Council Cargill. Last but not the least, with great respect, I request our today's chief guest, Haji Inayat Ali, Honorable Chairman, JNK Legislative Council, to come to the dais and share his views in our Haji Inayat Ali. Professor, Peace of the Sahib, Excellent Major, Keynote Speaker, Mr. John Berry, President, IALS, Dr. Sonam Marchuk, Secretary, IALS, Mr. Nazir Hussain, Deputy Secretary, Culture Academy. Mr. Hani Marjian, Honorable Chief Executive Councillor, Chairman, <coughs> LHDC Kargil. Honorable Councillor, Or ex councillors, honorable ex councillors, delegates from different parts of the world, district officers, permanent citizens, students, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome all of you to participate in this 17th conference here in Kargil, especially the delegates from different parts of the world who have arrived here and grace the occasions. Thank you. This conference is कारगिल में दूसरी दफा यहां पर मुनाकत किया जा रहा है इससे पहले 2004 में एक कॉन्फ्रेंस पहली दफा यहां पर ऑर्गेनाइज किया गया था इस कॉन्फ्रेंस का क्या मकसद क्या मतलब और इसे क्या आप हासिल कर सकते हैं इसके बारे में हम सबको जानकारी होना चाहिए इसके बारे में हम सबको नॉलेज होना चाहिए क्योंकि ये कॉन्फ्रेंस ऐसे कॉन्फ्रेंस जो हमारे लिए फखर की बात है कि इंटरनेशनल लेवल पर इतने सारे मेहमान इतने सारे स्कॉलर कागिल तस्वीर ब्लॉक के हमारे जैसे इलाके में आके इस तरह कॉन्फ्रेंस करना ये हमारे लिए एक फखर की बात है और हमें आईएलएस जैसे ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का 
ان کا ہم تہہ دل سے مشکور رہنا چاہیے ان کا ہم کو شکریہ ادا کرنا چاہیے ہمیں فخر بھی ہونا چاہیے آج تک کرگل کے بارے میں خصوصا میں لداخ کی بات نہیں کر رہا ہوں میں لے کی بات نہیں کر رہا ہوں میں کرگل کے بارے میں ڈسٹرک کرگل کے بارے میں بات کر رہا ہوں کرگل جو ہے دنیا میں سب سے پیسفل جگہ مانا جاتا ہے لیکن افسوس کی بات ہے باہر ممالک میں یا ہماری ہی انڈیا کے کانٹری میں ہماری ہی کانٹری میں باقی سٹیٹ میں اس نظریے سے ہم کو نہیں دیکھتے ہیں لوگ یہ ایک جنگ کی میدان کی شکل میں دیکھتے ہیں لوگ اور لوگ سمجھتے ہیں اور جتنے بھی ٹورس وغیرہ جو یہاں پر آنا چاہتے ہیں وہ سمجھتے ہیں کہ یہ کرگل جو ہے وہ ایک جنگ کے میدان ہے وہاں پر لوگ اتنے ملب لوگ نہیں ہیں کہ جو ہم سے وہاں پر پیس نہیں ہیں اور اتنے خوبصورت جگہ نہیں ہیں جبکہ کرگل جو ہے جہاں تک میں سمجھتا ہوں بہت اچھی جگہ ہے ایز اے ٹورس کے لئے ہر لحاظ سے جو ہے اچھی جگہ ہے اور کلچر کے حساب سے بھی ہم بہت ریچ ہیں باقی جو ہے یہاں پر ہمیں ایک ایسی چیز کرگل میں ہے جو دنیا کے کسی کونے میں نہیں ہے جو بنیان کے بعد جو ہمارے یہاں پر لارڈ بدھاز یہ کہ جو سٹیچوی تھے جو بنیان میں سب سے بڑا انچا سٹیچوی تھے وہ خیر اس وقت ملٹن کے ہاتھوں چلے گئے تو اس کے بعد جو ہے کرگل میں جو ہے اس وقت ورڈ کے سب سے ہائی سٹیچو جو ہے کرگل میں یہ ہمارے لئے ایک سرمایہ ہے ہمارے ٹوریزم کے لئے ایک سرمایہ ہے واقعہ مل میں بھی ایک سٹیچو ہے ہمارے سوت میں بھی ایک سٹیچو ہے تین تین سٹیچو جو ہمارے یہاں پر ہیں لارڈ بدھے جی کے لیکن اس کو لوگوں کے نظر میں ٹوریز کی نظر میں ورڈ کے نظر میں کبھی اب اس کا یہ نہیں ہوا ہے اس کا کبھی بھی ملک ہمارے نیشنل لیول پر یا انٹرنیشنل لیول پر اس کا کئی یہ نظر نہیں آتا ہے دوسری بات یہ ہے یہاں پر جس طرح ہمارے بلکستان میں ہیں کے ٹو پکس ہے اس طرح ہمارے یہاں پر دو پکس بہت مشہور ہیں جن کو ننکن کی نام سے جانا جاتا ہے ہم جب چھوٹے تھے اس وقت بہت سارے انٹرنیشنل ٹوریز جو ہے وہاں پر ایکسپیڈیشن کے لئے آتے تھے لیکن جب سے سندگر میں ڈسٹرمنٹ شروع ہو گئے سندگر میں کشمیر میں جو ملٹنسی کا دور شروع ہوا تب سے نون کا نام جو ہے ابھی اس وقت میرے خیال سے کہیں بھی ہم کو نظر نہیں آتا لہٰذا یہاں کے کلچر یہاں کے ٹوریزم جو سائٹ ہیں ان کو مدر رکھ کے ان کو سٹیڈی کرنے کی ضرورت ہے ان کو آگے بڑھانے کی ضرورت ہے باقی یہاں پر ہمارے جو جتنے بھی آئی ایل ایس کے ممبران ہیں انہوں نے کافی اس کے بارے میں کافی ریسیش کیے ہوئے ہیں ہم تو ابھی شروعات کر رہے ہیں یہاں پر یہ دو دفعہ ہمارے کانفرنس شروع ہوئے دس سال کے بعد آج دوسری دفعہ یہاں پر کیے گئے ہیں ہمیں امید ہے کہ آئندہ بھی ایسے کانفرنس یہاں پر ارگنیس کیا جائیں گے انشاءاللہ ہمیں امید ہے خاص کر ہمارے لوکل جو ہمارے لڈاک کے جو ہے تیس ٹوپدن صاحب ہیں ان کا بھی انٹریس ہونا چاہے یہاں پر ایز ایز لوکل کی صاحب سے دوسرا جان بریس کی ہم بہت مشکور ہیں جو فارن کنٹری سے ہوتے ہوئے بھی ہمارے علاقے کا ہمارے کلچر کے بارے میں اتنا انہوں نے سٹیڈی کیا اتنا اس کو آگے پھیلایا اور اس کے ساتھ ساتھ جو ہے انہوں نے اپنے ساتھ جو باہر ممالک کے جو لوگ سٹوڈنٹس وغیرہ سکولرز وغیرہ ساتھ لائے ہیں ان کے ہمیں بہت مردم کرتے ہیں ہم ویلکم کرتے ہیں کیونکہ ان کے ذریعے جو ہے لدہ کا ہے ترگیل کا کلچر لدہ کا کلچر جو ہے آگے انٹرنیشنل لیول پر ہم کھلا جا سکتا ہے ہم چاہتے ہیں کہ جنہیں بھی یہاں پر سکولر آئے ہوئے ہیں سٹوڈنٹس آئے ہوئے ہیں ڈیفنٹ پارٹس دنیا کے دوسرے جمعوں سے ہم امید کرتے ہیں کہ وہ لدہ کا نمائندگی کر کے ہمارے ہی رائزر بینک کے ہمارے ہی نمائندی کر کے یہاں گورڈ میں دونے کے کونے کونے میں یہاں کے 
जम्मू के हमारे करगिल के कल्चर के लद्दाख के कल्चर के ये लोग वहाँ पर इसका हम ये फैलाएंगे और हमारे लद्दाख के बारे में ये लोग दुनिया को पहचानेंगे लद्दाख क्या चीज़ है कैसे हैं ये लोग हमें उम्मीद है ये लोग हमारे हमारी मदद करेंगे और हम आगे भी ये कॉन्फ्रेंस दो तीन दिन चलने वाले हैं उसमें भी शायद मैं तो नहीं हूँ और एजाज साहब आके बाकी इनके गन्नाथ जिनके भी उनसे रिलेटेड है उनका भी मैं बहुत मशहूर हूँ इन्होंने ऐसा एक मतलब चीज़ बनाया है और इनको मैंने उनसे भी कुछ दिन भी इंश्योरेंस किया था कि मैं उसके लिए मैं कुछ ना कुछ इंतजाम करूँगा क्योंकि वो जगह बहुत कंजेस्ट है शायद ज़मीन का खुद ये इंतजाम कर लेंगे बाकी बिल्डिंग्स का मैंने आगे बात किया हुआ है इन और हम हम उसके भी हम बात करेंगे वहाँ पर जाकर ये म्यूजियम गया एक मॉडल बना के हम रखने का हम ये करते हैं लिहाजा यहाँ पर जितने भी आए हुए सिटीजन्स जो खासकर लोकल्स हैं आप लोगों का भी कुछ फर्ज बनते हैं यहाँ जितने भी मेहमान आए हुए हैं नेशनल लेवल पर इंटरनेशनल लेवल पर उनके साथ आप लोगों को हाथ से हाथ मिला के चलाना है कदम से कदम मिला के चलना है और आगे भी इन हमें उम्मीद है कि जॉन साहब और बाकी इनके जितने भी साथी हैं वो तरगील के लिए आगे भी ऐसे कॉन्फ्रेंस आगे भी ऐसे मतलब प्रोग्राम रखने की हम उम्मीद करते हैं इसी के साथ मैं तमाम आए हुए लोगों का मेहमानों का तमाम लोगों का और यहाँ के जितने भी सिटीजन उन सबका शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ असल वरम डिप्टी सेक्रेटरी अकेडमी ऑफ आर्ट कल्चर एंड लैंग्वेज टू प्रेजेंट दोट ऑफ थैंक्स एंड आई ऑल्सो फील वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू मैंशन वर्क वेरी हार्ड फॉर द सक्सेसफुल कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड आई विल रिक्वेस्ट मिस्टर नजीर अहमद टू कम टू दाइस एंड प्रेजेंट ऑनरेबल चेयरमैन लेजिस्ट्री काउंसिल गवर्नमेंट ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर ऑनरेबल चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव काउंसिलर लद्दाख अटोनोमस हिल डेवलपमेंट काउंसिल कारगिल ऑनरेबल एग्जीक्यूटिव काउंसिलर आगा शहीद अब्बास एंड श्री मंदूस प्रोफेसर पी स्तोपदान फॉर्मर एम्बेसडर एंड डिफेंस एनालिसिस मिस्टर जॉन बिरे प्रेजिडेंट आई एल एस डॉक्टर सोना मांगचू सेक्रेटरी आई एल एस मिस्टर गुलजार हुसैन मुंशी कन्वीनियर द मैन बिहाइंड द सीन एंड ऑल द डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफिसर्स फॉर मेन सिटीजन डिलेगेट फ्रॉम द डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड कुलीग्स एंड माई डियर फ्रेंड असलम एंड वेलकम टू करगिल the most beautiful place in the himalaya the most peaceful place in the himalaya as a survey research states that kargil has a 0% crime it is a great opportunity for all of us especially for my department jammu and kashmir academy of art culture and language and hill development council kargil we are very grateful for ILS and Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development Council especially chairman legislative council government of Jammu and Kashmir and the chief executive councilor LSC Kargil for supporting such a oriented research conference in Kargil before i conclude i must also acknowledge the support and effort of various individuals and the department in Kargil without whom this conference would not have been possible on the behalf of jammu and kashmir academy of culture and language and ilas i would like to formally thank mr moses kunzan additional deputy commissioner kargil mr khalid deputy superintendent of police kargil mr shabir hussain chief medical officer kargil mr dondu chief executive officer kargil kargil development authority madam amina qari principal government degree college kargil principal diet kargil and hod diet kargil chief education officer kargil mr sher khan executive engineer mechanical mr agas sahid toha assistant director tourism executive engineer ptd kargil mr mohammad talib executive engineer rmd second mr hussain for information officer and mr tundu the who maintain the line order is the sho of kargil and the media person of course all india radio kargil doordarshan stv etv and the reach uh, ladakh bulletin and their correspondent stawa 
Ladakh special, greater Ladakh. Last but not the least, I would like, I also like to thank all of the, our, our volunteer and ILS members. Especially, I want to mention some name because these people really hard, do hard work day and night. Without this conference, was not possible at all. Mr. Gulzar Hussain, he is a convener and also currently holding a post of executive engineer at EW. Mr. Ajaz Munshi, my colleague, my friend, my uh, as a Muhammad Ali Ta, culture officer Kargil, Mr. Uh, Muhammad Hussain Fayaz, and uh, Mr. Rigzin Bodkarbu. And the last, we will, from the deepest of our hearts, we would like to invite you similar life of conference in the next consecutive areas after lay. We would like, we know that uh, as a, a members of ILS, it is a unfortunate or fortunate that here the second conference after 10 years again. So we want to request the president and the secretary. We people of Kargil want a shared view, similar like if lay is 2015 Kargil, okay, 17 somewhere, 18, 19, 19 lay and 21 also in Kargil. So this is a humble request from on the behalf of as a member and the deputy secretary culture academy. I hope you have a pleasant stay in Kargil. We are here for you. Everything, anything you need, we are here as a volunteer. So have a nice stay in the Kargil. God bless you. See you after the second session in the TFC Kargil. There we have a parallel uh, conference and we have a uh, lunch there. So see you. Thank you so much for your visiting Kargil. Thank you so much. <laughs>